Okay, we're gonna try to uh, get these fish to come up to the surface. Uh, I'm feeding them freeze-dried Tubifex worms. They absolutely love it. They go crazy for this stuff. Uh, eventually, I'm hoping the big cats will come out from the bottom. These are sunfish. I'm going to go ahead and throw more cubes in. There's a baby catfish right there, kind of out of focus. Hopefully we'll see some of the big ones emerging here in a little bit. It's always a good idea to have the pump and skimmer off when you're feeding them, of course. That way the food doesn't get sucked into the skimmer. There's a little baby catfish right there. They've grown quite a bit since last summer. Well, look, looks like most of the cubes are gone. I'm just gonna wind up shaking this on. All right, that should be enough. I'm hoping to have enough in there to give the scent off so the catfish start going for, for the surface because these little guys will also eat off the top. I gotta tell you guys, uh, this fish pond experience has been quite a journey. Six months ago I inherited a bunch of different fish from my dad's pool that is under renovation and there were just fish in there, long story short, and we had to rescue them before the pool would naturally drain out. So I was under kind of an emergency situation. Ooh, ooh there's a big, big guy. There's a big guy. So I was under kind of an emergency rush to get this done. So at first, uh, focus, focus. Sorry, the refraction is very difficult. I will get my underwater camera in again and we're gonna get some new underwater shots now that I've got the pool resolved. Anyway, I digress. Uh, basically, I went through a lot of trial and error to get to this. So this is a very happy point for me because now it just requires a little routine maintenance and very, very easy to take care of. Uh, watch my videos and please learn from my mistakes because it was an expensive learning process to get this figured out. And this is prototyping for my fish pond that will be in front of the house, which will be about 10,000 gallons. And this, this type of system will scale up to that very nicely. So now I know exactly what to do on that. So the whole point of this was to learn at a small budget and figure out how to master caring for fish. And in the easiest possible. Wow, let's see the activities going on now. Oh, and there's a big guy. I've got about seven or eight big guys. Um, it's been impossible to keep any goldfish in here. Yeah, they're coming out like sharks now. I love, I love watching these guys swim. They're just so much fun. Uh, these are bullheads. They are yellow and black. Uh, the big one is a yellow bullhead. Um, there's also black bullheads. The offspring are from these fish. So these are these were born last year, most of them. But there are different sizes. There were a lot more of them, but unfortunately during the winter there was cannibalization. I had trouble feeding them. Uh, a lot of adaptation problems. The pond froze over. That's another video. Uh, that's there 
This here, I'm gonna have a thermal cover on it, so no more freezing, and then an aeration jet underneath. That's how I'm gonna keep it perfect during the winter, because it's so very important to have a solution for the winter. So it's been a long, hard process. Uh, if you notice, I had a fountain in here before that broke. Uh, too much hassle in moving it in and out, the lights with the cord everywhere. Uh, I'm gonna have to come up with a better solution, but for the intermediate, I'm going to go with that floating fountain because it's very, very easy to pull out and maintain. And now that I've solved the problem for the swimming pool, then that means that the fish pond can be solved the same way. And, and it might be fun to have a floating fountain in here. Obviously, I'd reduce the height on it, but uh, you know, then you'd have two big waterfalls running at once. And then if you get bored of it, you can take it out, put the regular jet in, you have options. I also have a moonlight level LED light for this. Uh, it's basically a hydromagnetic powered light, so it attaches also to the jet, no electricity required. It generates its own electricity. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a few more cubes in because it I'm going to see if I can get these big guys interested in coming to the surface. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun here. Uh, I'm trying to get them hooked uh, on this food, which most of them like it, but uh, I'm getting them trained. Here we go, here we go. This is what we want. I want them to come to the surface. They're all beautiful. Oh, look at you. You're beautiful. Look at that fish. That's a beautiful fish. So this tube effects worms if you're feeding fish. The Wardleaf pellets from Walmart weren't really a hit. I tried various different foods, but there's nothing like tube effects. It's uh, one of the healthiest foods you can give your fish. And on Amazon, it is very economical. Two pounds is $65. And that will last you a long time. I, I think with this many fish, I can't give an exact answer. It's my first two pounder but I'm thinking maybe two, three months. And that's really not bad, and you're giving them the equivalent of live food. So it's something they really enjoy. And I want them trained on this, and then hopefully if I can get them hooked on this food, I'll introduce goldfish again, and maybe the survival rate will be better on them. I always expect a few to get nibbled on. They're predators after all, and uh, when you throw that brightly colored orange fish in there, uh, they're going to go crazy for it, of course. And goldfish aren't very fast, and catfish are l like sharks. They are very, very fast. Uh, I have to say catfish are my favorite freshwater fish. It's They're highly underrated. Uh, it, it's absolutely, absolutely amazing animals. And eventually, maybe I'll uh, have enough of these where I can breed them so we can eat some. Oh, look at that. I saw them peeking out. Uh, I also have to say, if you're going to do this, uh, at first I was put off by this inflatable ring business. But I got to tell you, it works fine. I haven't had to put air into it. When it's very cold, it does deflate. But the best thing is just to leave it alone because... Uh, on a 100 degree day, you don't want it to burst on you. But I've had no trouble with it. One advantage is that if you look on the side, that concave outward shell actually works very well because the algae can grow on the interior and it provides a cave all the way around the perimeter so the catfish can hide during the day. So that was an unexpected bonus from this particular uh, layout. Uh, I didn't expect this. Uh, this pool, by the way, is only about $50 on Amazon. And that is the cheapest price you'll pay for a 1,000 gallon aquarium. Now the filtration system, on the other hand, you're looking at about 200 for the pump filter, everything. Um, the, the 36 watt UV light, you're looking at about $80. Plus there's going to be various parts, plumbing, little things you need so you know total total price you know figure on about 400 for everything and you you have the very best setup there is so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video um we're gonna leave with this 
magnificent shot right here. Thanks for watching.